All right, guys, I'm going to do a controversial video on weld through primer. I've been doing these weld through primer videos for quite a while, and I've been, you know, doing tests and that type of thing, trying to figure out what's the best and what's going to work, what's not going to work, and what will burn off and won't burn off, and I've got lots of test studies, videos, and the whole thing. So as you can see here, uh, I've got the medallion weld through primer which I had planned on using which I actually did use um, and then I've got the U-pole copper weld through now this is going to be zinc and this is copper uh, from my understanding this is it's a very very good copper it's expensive but you get what you pay for it's one of those deals so as you can see here I've done this it's copper copper and then here I had the medallion and then I went ahead and coppered all of my frame rails so that I have the copper on copper I didn't want to mix these two which I had already done so last video we talked about um, some of the weld through and had several questions on it and it's been kind of a contentious area some people are saying don't use it at all, it's junk, it melt, messes the welds up, it makes them weaker. There's lots and lots of debates, lots of, like even ICAR and some certain places like Toyota I don't think are using weld through um, zinc and stuff like that. So here's the thing. Um, I, and I'll get to the, the paperwork here in a minute. This is the scientific backing behind what I'm going to tell you guys. I don't have the inner rocker anymore that I used to have. I, I threw a lot of this stuff away. But all this in here was all, and maybe I'll get lucky and find something in here, but I don't think so. All this is, all this is zinc coated. So from the factory, the inner rockers were zinc coated. I think the outer rockers were zinc coated as well. But anywhere that they had pinch welded because that's the way they did it back then anywhere that they pinch welded okay back to what I was saying before the battery died as you can see this is this is zinc plated all this was zinc plated and anywhere that they had pinch welded this together the zinc was all intact it's a little dirty right now but it was all intact it was clean it'd be shiny zinc but anywhere they had pinch welded inside my rocker it was rusted. Just the pinch weld itself was rusted in a perfect little circle where they pinched it together. So, taking that into consideration, <coughs> Kevin and I have both done some homework. We kind of went back and forth on this subject for quite some time because this is important. This is what you're putting in between your panels and um, you're welding through it and so you want it to last you want it to wick back in you want it to do the stuff that it says it's supposed to do well is it and is it worth it so we went back to the basically back to science back to the basic um, properties of everything and so what we've got here and I've taken this from the engineering toolbox um, and these are basically, this is the melting point. This is the point at, at which the temperature as the substance changes from a solid to a liquid state. Okay, so this is the melting point. Okay, so what we have, what we're using is low carbon steel. You've got high carbon steel, you've got uh, stainless steel, and you've got low carbon steel. The low carbon steel is the best for what we do because it's able to be molded and create you know it's able to be shaped you get the high carbon steel it's brittle and, it, and it, it's not as malleable you can't you can't do that with it so this is what we have we have low carbon steel so basically what what we look at is okay we're going to weld this okay what we've done here is we plug welded this so when you plug weld something what you're doing is you're melting the two metals together you're liquefying them and making them into one so that's what you're doing when you're welding. So ultimately what we want to know is at what point does this metal melt? What, what's the melting point of, of this? Okay, so we come down here to carbon steel 
and then we come over to Fahrenheit and it says this metal melts at 26 to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit okay so that's key remember that keep that in your mind that's where we're melting that's what we're heating this up to with our MIG welder to get this to actually liquefy and melt together okay so then we then we look at zinc which is the most popular stuff that that we use and we say okay what is the melting point of zinc so we came to the same deal we come down here to the very bottom here it says zinc then we come over and it says 787 degrees Fahrenheit zinc melts okay well that's cool so what we're saying is the zinc is melting before it ever hits before it ever starts to, to or it starts to liquefy before the the metal ever starts to liquefy well that's fine however here's where we need to 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 take a look at this we're going to come over to this paper this says the boiling temperatures okay so now we need to know at what point does zinc actually boil because when it boils basically just like this says the temperature at which it changes the substance from a solid to a liquid anytime you have something that boils you're changing it from a liquid into a gas okay so now we're looking at changing zinc into a gas well what happens when it turns into a gas it, it goes away it, it floats into the atmosphere it's turning into a gas so it's ultimately to make it simplified it's going away it's burning away okay so let's look and see at what Fahrenheit and you can see here Fahrenheit zinc burns away at 1670 degrees Fahrenheit that means it turns into a gas and goes completely away it's gone you've burned it away so by the time you heat your metal to 2600 degrees this has been way gone way gone so it's burned away everything that the weld and around the weld is touched and all that that's why you end up getting the rust that you get around your welds if you don't seam seal it do all that kind of stuff and all that kind of stuff so with that being said that tells me that that stuff is pretty well worthless for for plug welding uh, for any any type of MIG welding like we're doing here ultimately that stuff was designed for pinch welding in my understanding from the homework that I've done however even on the pinch welds it went away because it allowed rust to get in there where it was pinched together where it heated up it probably heated past the boiling point and it went away so seeing that Kevin has his tree's been doing a truck and he's got the same thing he's got actual photographic evidence which I have on my phone of basically every spot where they pinch welded it it's rusted in those pinch welds okay so now we're gonna switch gears and go over to the copper now I'm not gonna say well the U poles the way to go or SEM or any of that I'm just gonna say all I can tell you is this stuff is highly highly recommended highly rated it's supposed to be you know really good stuff so let's do the same thing with this let's find out what the melting point of copper is so we come you know to our melting come down to copper it says copper we go over to Fahrenheit Fahrenheit it melts at 1983 degrees okay that's fine so it is actually melting it's going to melt and we already knew that uh, copper melts at a lower temperature than, than steel we knew that uh, that's what you got your silicone bronze and all that it actually just sits on top of the steel you can use it as filler material and all that kind of stuff um, because it's it, it melts at a lower temperature it's the same with the copper it melts at a lower temperature however does it boil away that's the key that's the important point because if it melts it just melts and it integrates with the steel so we know that the steel is going to melt at 2600 to 2800 degrees well this is going to melt along with it but does it actually burn away well let's come over to this side okay if you look at this this is the boiling temperatures you come down to copper 
you come over to Fahrenheit, you come down to it, 4,667 degrees Fahrenheit before it boils. Okay, so it is not actually leaving. It's not boiling away, it's not going anywhere because we never heat the metal to that point, ever. We're heating it to 2,600 to 2,800 degrees. That's several thousand degrees more to actually get that to turn into a gas state. So for me, what I found is in, in this is not conclusive, this is just us looking at this thing, going back to scientific evidence of what this is versus what this is and what the boiling point versus melting points are and saying this is scientific proof that this will not boil away until 60, 6, 4667 degrees. Now, the boiling point of metal, let's talk about that because that was something that I tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to find. And it's because metal is made up of multiple things, um, the, the carbon steel has all kinds of different, uh, it's got nickel in it, it's got molybdenum in it, it's got uh, a bunch of different stuff. It's got tin, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. So it's made up of multiple deals. So it's hard to find the boiling temperature. But I went to a foundry site and found that one of the guys, super scientific, like, way over my head but he come up to the conclusion that and he 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 said 3000 degrees kelvin so i had to commute that over to um degrees fahrenheit into something that i understand and it was 5400 degrees is about what he's saying the melting or the boiling point of metal is well Obviously, we'll ne we'll never we're never getting it that that hot. Obviously, in a foundry, yeah, they're they're melting it down to to liquid and then even possibly gas states. But he said it's very rare to see it boil. So ultimately, at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say, and this is why I'm turning over to copper weld through, because of these findings, in my opinion, and from what I see in this this here. When I've welded this, this zinc has gone away. Okay, now I'm going to come back in here and, and, and put my, you know, use my syringe and push my epoxy back in through here and all that kind of stuff. So I'll be fine. However, from here on out, knowing that this is actually going to melt into the molten puddle and stay, and copper is. Um, going to be a rust resistant material um, I know it's going to be there okay so versus the zinc which clearly says it's going to go away on both sides it, especially here 1670 degrees it's gone you, you're melting this to 2,500, at least 2,500 degrees to get it to melt together. That stuff is gone. It's in the atmosphere, and you're probably breathing it in your welding helmet if you're not wearing some kind of mask. Now, that's another positive for the copper. Copper's not near as bad for you to breathe if you're not using, you know, some kind of a, a, a ventilation system or whatever, some kind of a mask. That stuff is really, really, zinc is really bad for you to breathe. We know that for a fact. So, take what you want from that. Um, I know this video will get lots and lots of thumbs downs and lots of this, that, and the other. I don't care. If, if this causes a discussion to open up and, and you know, uh, some other ideas and thoughts to come out, and us to actually learn more from this video, then that's that's what it, that's what it's all about. Am I a hundred thousand percent convinced that this is the best stuff ever? No. Is it the best stuff out there? I don't even know that. All I know is this is probably some of the purest copper you can get. It's super expensive, um, 
and I put three good coats of this down. Now it says to put two coats, I put three coats and I turn my welder up and I burn through. But I'm still not even getting close to a boiling point of 4,400 degrees. So this stuff is not going to boil away, it's not going to go away, it's going to melt and intermingle with the metal, uh, the melted puddle that you molted together basically. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'll probably end the video on that for today. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, get it put on there and weld it. Um, and I'll probably make a whole other video for, for that. But this ultimately is what I wanted to put down today because of the findings that Kevin and I have found, mostly Kevin, he's done the homework and then I backed up his homework by looking it back up and making sure that I understood exactly what was going on and what he was telling me. Um, so there you go. Uh, I hope you guys got something out of this um, and uh, you guys have a good day. See you.